flippity flip, flippity flip, flop flap and smokes everyone. 36 trillion and counting. This market crash is going to go down in the history books and it is going to be talked about for centuries. The crash that nobody thought would come, the interest rates that people thought would never see, the stock market, bond market, cryptocurrency market, sell off that everybody feared would come is finally here. And in today's video, it is going to be an action packed, full of data, full of charts, full of information to show us that how bad things really are and how bad things are really going to get. Because remember, you heard it here first, people. I was trying to warn people during the rampant speculation when we're seeing meme stocks like AMC, GME, Doggy Coin, Shiba Inu, the profitless tech company skyrocketing, the hedge funds like Kathy Wood that brought into these speculative investments thought they were geniuses because everyone seems like a genius in a bull market, but it's only until the tide comes out you see who's been swimming naked. But a lot of these speculators are thinking, this is the bottom, it's time to get in now, it's time to buy now, the Fed's going to pivot, just like the Bank of England. Well, people, I have some unfortunate news for you. Even though this is a record sell-off, I think we still have some ways to go yet. So everyone, you're definitely going to want to watch this whole video to the end. Let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this, everyone. This is frightening. Raging market sell-off in five charts. 36 trillion and counting. Did you hear that, everyone? I just need to reiterate how big this is. $36 trillion of wealth this year has been wiped out like that, evaporated, gone forever. And guess what? That is more than 2008 and the 2000 dot com bust. So it's not me being sensational when I say this, that this is worse than 2008. And guess what? There's one more crash to rival. And yes, that is the Great Depression, which is definitely likely that we could be facing. S&P's post rare third straight quarterly loss as Fed hikes. Stocks and bonds fall in tandem as investors rush to cash. So this is very, very rare, everyone. Normally the stock market rebounds after a couple of negative quarters, but no, we've had three quarters in a row of the stock market falling. And when it seems like, you know, it's time to buy the dip, while well, the dip turns into a rip. And unlike many other crashes, not only are stocks falling, but also bonds are falling at the same time. So all these people saying, look, you got to diversify into stocks and bonds. While the 60-40 portfolio is not working, it is down over 20%. And with the year heading into its last quarter, there's likely to be more pain coming because a lot of people thought that the Federal Reserve would be pivoting by now or they thought that the Federal Reserve would only lift interest rates to 2 or 3%, and then they'll drop them back to zero again. Well, people like I've been warning about, this isn't going to happen. And the second in charge that the Federal Reserve has come out and said, no, there isn't going to be any pivot. We're going to keep rates high, and there aren't going to be any cuts in 2023. We're not going to do like the Bank of England did. At least that's what they're saying for now. Listen to this. Fed united on inflation front as Bernard rejects early rate cuts. So to give credit where credit's due, at the start of the year, the Federal Reserve was trying to play both cards. They're trying to say, look, We'll raise interest rates, but you know, if the economy weakens, maybe we'll pivot. Or if the data falls down, maybe we'll lower interest rates. Well, no, they know the inflation genie is out of the bottle and they have to keep on hiking and nothing's going to stop them. And for all my subscribers that remember, put this in the comments. Remember when I was trying to tell people, warn people at the start of the year, look, when the Federal Reserve starts raising interest rates and reducing their balance sheet, all assets are going to fall and the dollar is going to rise and that's why you're going to want to have some cash. Because I said no assets are going to be safe as the dollar surges higher. I said commodities will fall, stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies. Even though I like gold and silver and a lot of my subscribers like gold and silver, I was saying, look, with the dollar rising, they're going to fall as well. Seems like a lot of investors are starting to get the memo. From the look of it, one could be forgiven for stashing cash under the mattress. Well, I think a lot of people are starting to do that with taking their money out of the banks. Indeed, in the latest Bank of America Corp's fund manager survey, participants said their exposure to cash was at all-time highs. And for all those that have been stashing cash on the sides, guess what? There is going to be great opportunities ahead. But guess what? We're going to have to go through a lot of pain first to get there. And like I'm going to show you, we are not anywhere close to there yet. Okay, so chart number one, everyone. Look at this chart. This is frightening. Steep falls. Global bonds and stocks see their bigger ever loss in market value. That's right. The biggest ever in history. We can see down here 
over $36 trillion has been wiped out. And look over here, this is 2008, where it was only around 23 or 24 trillion was wiped out. I say that uh, lightly only, but look at this. This is going to absolutely dwarf 2008. And the reason why there's been so much more wiped out is because the central banks created so much money, they created way too much money, they tried to tell us this wouldn't lead to a speculation, it wouldn't lead to inflation, but now it's starting to backfire. And why this is going to be so much worse is, unlike 2008, there's not going to be a savior this time. Missing savior, Fed's balance sheet and target rate won't save the day this time. So we can see here, this is the Fed's balance sheet on the top, and this is their federal funds rate. We can see here during the financial crisis, well, they expanded their balance sheet and they dropped interest rates. And then we saw around 2018, 2019, uh, they started to lower interest rates again and print money again because of the repo crisis. Then we had the 2020 recession, then they printed money like crazy. But as we can see here now in 2022, inflation is going crazy and they're going to hike interest rates much higher. Another reason why this market crash is going to be so much worse than 2008 is because do you know this bull run we just had, this 14 year bull run from 2008 to 2022, yes we had some short blips here like 2018 and 2020, but the central banks printed money, they turned the money printers on, they lowered interest rates and they rebounded straight away. So this 14 year bull run, guess what? That is the longest bull run in history. Normally, bull runs or business cycles go in a cycle of 7 to 10 years, and then we have a huge recession or huge correction, but they have artificially keep the markets propped up, and this is not natural, and this is why we're going to have an unnatural and an unprecedented crash. Strategists at Bank of America have counted 294 interest rate hikes globally since August 2021, alongside $3.1 trillion in quantitative tightening in the past seven months. As a result, the global stock and bond market cap has cold turkey collapsed, adding that rates and quantitative tightening shock had hit Wall Street's addiction to liquidity. That's right, we've all heard of this, everyone, that they're addicted to the stimulus. They're addicted to the high of getting that stimulus injected of the cheap debt. And now the markets are starting to have withdrawal systems from this stimulus. And everyone's focusing on interest rates going up, but like they said here, $3 trillion has been done in quantitative tightening. And the Federal Reserve has $9 trillion worth of assets on their balance sheet. And I think that's going to do even more damage than the interest rate hikes, like what we're seeing with the bond market collapsing and like we're seeing with mortgage rates absolutely skyrocket. Mortgage rates are now over 7%. And just like the stock market, bond market, cryptocurrency market, even gold and silver, we're going to see the housing market fall. And that's going to be the final nail in the coffin that is going to turn this recession into a depression. I don't say this lightly, people. This is what we're going to be facing. The housing market normally lags every other market. But think about it like this. A lot of people could afford to bid up house prices because they made record amounts of money in the stock market. They made heaps of money in cryptocurrencies and they use that as a down payment for their house. Now think about these people or these investors that were betting on their stocks going up their cryptocurrencies going up they didn't have their money in the bank and they use their stock portfolio as a deposit for a house well their stock portfolio is now down 50 percent they're not going to be able to use that money for a deposit for a house anymore another terrifying trend here everyone stress everywhere volatility measures have risen in all major asset classes and this is something that could lead to like what we saw in england financial instability and this is what could lead to something in the financial system breaking and what we nearly saw in london last week was a full-on financial lehman like crisis and what the markets are really in right now is they're like a sinking ship with a hole in the ship it is sinking but the central banks are using their buckets to try to stop the boat from going under and yes why it is buying them some time it doesn't matter how much they try eventually the ship is going to sink and another chart for the history books, first time in decades, S&P 500 index has never closed negative after strong gains since 1938. The third quarter will also get its place in the history books for one of the biggest reversals. It is the first quarter since 1938 that the S&P 500 index closed in the red after gaining more than 10%. This is nothing short of extraordinary, everyone. We are breaking all the records and not the right kind of records. This has never happened since 1938. And 
also the bond market collapse we're seeing in the global markets. This is the worst bond market crash we've seen since the Great Depression. Because look at this, Dow Jones now down 7,800 points, down 21%. The S&P 500 now down 25%. TLT, iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF is now down 29% year to date. And Bitcoin is down 59%. So okay, we know this is an epic market crash, but what we need to know is how bad will this crash get and when is the real opportunities for us going to come where we can make life-changing wealth? Let's have a deeper look, everyone. We'll look at this chart, everyone. This is the Fed's balance sheet versus the S&P 500. And we can see it is correlated. When the balance sheet goes up, like we saw in 2012 and 2013, the market goes up. Then when it started to fall in 2018, 2019, we saw a 20% reduction in the S&P 500. And of course, when the balance sheet skyrocketed uh, in 2020 and 2021, we saw this crazy bull run, and now it is starting to correct in 2022. And this is only the beginning of Federal Reserve's quantitative tightening. They've only just started. So this shows us there is still going to be more pain coming. And if you want to know when to buy, it is when the Federal Reserve is going to pivot and when we start to get some better economic data. But people, we aren't anywhere close to that. And here's some more charts to prove it. This is the famous Warren Buffett indicator. And we are at 151% ratio of the stock market's market cap to GDP. And yes, what has come down a fair bit, like I predicted, we are still 19% higher than the long-term trend. Another great indicator, this is the S&P 500 PE. This is the price to earnings ratio, the price of the stocks to how much companies are making. And yes, why this has also come down, it's now an 18, the medium is 14.9. Now, also some huge news we got this week that I think you all need to know about how to prepare for this market crash getting worse is something that we got out of London. London gold dealers run out of bullion as trust budget shocks. Bullion price in sterling came close to a record last week. Brokerage sees surge in demand from British retail investors. Look at this chart, everyone. Pound panic. Gold came close to a record in sterling last week. And this is what happens when currencies collapse. We see people go back to what is real money. That's right. Gold and silver, all fair currencies throughout history, they've all failed. Now, what's been happening in the US is the US dollar has been surging. So the price in USD for gold has been falling. But as we have seen, it has held up much better than stocks, cryptocurrencies, bonds. And what this means is if you're an investor anywhere else in the world and you're wanting to protect yourself against your currency declining, well, gold may be a good investment. Again, not financial advice, just what I'm doing, especially here in Australia with the Australian dollar crashing. Even though it's not hitting all-time highs in US dollars, wherever you're saying if your currency is collapsing, people are going to run to real money, and that is gold. And that's why I've always said you should have some insurance in your portfolio for gold. It may not go up a 1,000x like cryptocurrencies, but you're not going to have to deal with the 60 or 70% declines. So that's something I think investors should think about during this market crash. Now, I know what you're thinking, okay, with all this data, with all these charges, all this economic jargon, what does this mean for you in simple terms? What this means, everyone, this is going to be an epic market crash that will rival the Great Depression and people will talk about for centuries. And what all the data is telling us right now is we have still a minimum 15 to 20% declines to go for us to reach somewhere near close to the bottom. But if what I think is going to happen, like what we saw in London happen this week, we have some kind of financial crisis and a liquidity crisis, we could see these huge banks and these huge hedge funds get margin calls. And unfortunately, the central banks may not be there to bail them out again and again. And that could lead to a Black Monday-like event like 1987, where the Dow Jones plunged 22% in one day. So everyone, if I was you, I would be doing whatever I could to find ways to increase my income by either getting promotion, taking on a second job, what I think is even better because unfortunately people aren't getting rewarded uh, in the jobs market. I would find a way to start a side hustle, a side business, so you can be more in control of your finances, more in control of your income, and prepare yourself for some of the best opportunities we've seen for centuries, because I think homes are going to be sold for pennies on the dollar, cars are going to be sold for pennies on the dollar, all these assets that people bought with cheap debt, cheap money, they're going to lose everything. Unfortunately, it is sad, but this will create opportunities for the next generation and the people that missed out on the previous bull runs. So everyone, what do you think? Let me know down below. And of course, I'll see you all in the next video.